today you will need for your project as well. Um, I'm using a 7 4.5 millimeter uh, hook and I just got some scissors here. You don't necessarily have to use this same size if you want to go smaller or larger. It's completely up to you. But to make about a three and a half to four inch square, you're going to want a number seven. So this is going to be used as a stash buster for me as well. Got a couple of smaller squares. I'm going to be working with the color bone today. And I'm also working with, what is this one called? This one is woodland heather and dark country blue. And like I said, these have been in my stash for a little bit. So they're looking a little bit beat up. But um, I've also got um, some other colors that I'm working with. I pretty much just chose the woodsy colors out of the Karen Simply Soft pile that I had. So I'm going to just kind of keep these off to the side and we're going to start with the bone. And I'm going to make a magic ring and start there. We are going to put eight single crochets inside of our magic circle. I chained one just to kind of snap everything into place. So eight single crochets. All right, I've got my eight and I've pulled my center string in order to make it nice and tight in the middle. I am going to actually join this Normally I would not, but for this project we do, so that you have a nice, perfect little circle like that. Chain one, and now I want you to put two, and I'm gonna catch this up in my next round just so that I can help secure that. I'm gonna put two single crochets into each of the eight going around, which means after this row, I am going to have 16 stitches going around my circle and I'm going to slip stitch with the first single crochet of this round to join. Okay, I'm in the process of joining with the first single crochet so that once again I have just a complete circle and since I went ahead and I tucked that into my second row, I feel like that's going to be fairly secure and I'm going to cut that off and get rid of it. Now the next round, we are going to be making half double crochets. So I want you to chain two. All right, and in that same join space, I want you to do another half double crochet. We are not going to count that first chain two as our first half double crochet. It's just meant to fill in so that we don't end up with a gap when we join at the end of this round. All right, in the next single crochet, put two half double crochets. And then I want you to continue with doing a single half double crochet and two half double crochets all the way around. So one and then two. Keep going till you have 24 stitches. I am at the end of round three, but I'm gonna change colors after this row. So you can either Go ahead and cut off and join with your first half double crochet and then rejoin your color or you can change your color right now. Keeping the last three loops on your hook, pull through and then join with the first half double crochet of your round. Not that chain two, remember. All right, and so from here, we're going to actually double crochet. This is the first time that our chain is gonna count as the first stitch of our round. So this is a double crochet. And in that same space, same join space, I want you to do another double crochet, a chain two, and two more double crochets. And two more double crochets. Then I want you to put a double crochet into the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. We're gonna make another corner, which is gonna be two double crochets chain two, two double crochets, 
into this next stitch. And once again, we're going to double crochet into five stitches. All right, I want you to do that two more times. Do the corner, two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, and double crochet into the next five. Alrighty, here's where we're going to change it up again. And we are going to slip stitch to the third chain of our chain three. All right, here we're gonna cut this off. And we're gonna do one more color change, but this time, we are going to join it later, which means, you know, out here, we're gonna join it to a corner because it's so much easier. One, two, three, double crochet, chain two, two double crochets. And then I want you to double crochet into each of the double crochets going across. And that's gonna be a total of nine stitches working from one corner to the next. So you're gonna continue this pattern onward, putting two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in each corner and double crocheting into each double crochet. And then you're going to uh, join with your first double crochet chain three over here. I'll meet you back over here when this is done. All right, we're gonna turn this square into a little deer. And I am using the Autumn Maze as the body color and ear color, and I'm using Off-White um, Karen Simply Soft as the antlers for our little deer. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna do is with your larger hook, your number seven, 4.5 millimeter, just take your maze, and we're gonna make the ears first. So when you're looking at your square, um, much like the little bear one, we're going to be starting See where the corner is on here, and then there's these two um, stitches here. We're going to go one to the right of that, and this is where we're going to actually be joining with our slip stitch. And then chain one. Now the next stitch, we're gonna be doing two double crochets around the post of this stitch. So one and two. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we want our ear to stick up, kind of like a deer's ears do. So what we do is we're going to slip stitch around the post of the color right above it, not up here, but here. So this corner where the opening is, it's gonna be the stitch immediately to the right of that opening. Go ahead and just slip stitch around that. You can chain one if you'd like and cut it off. Now just real quick, I'm just gonna show you that these, these slip stitch kind of, the slip stitch kind of just hides in there so when you pull it around, you're really only gonna see ear here um, as long as you try and keep it going in the direction of the stitch that you have. And then I just tuck it in back here. And the same with this extra one over here. I just tuck it to the back. All right, so that's ear number one. And we are going to do the same thing on the opposite side, but backwards. So knowing that we finished um, to the right, we're going to go backwards on the opposite side. So find your corner and your two stitches down here. We're gonna start with the post up here where we finished our with our slip stitch on the first ear. We're gonna slip stitch around the upper portion of it. 
And then we're going to go down to the stitch right below it around the post and do two double crochets around that same post. And then the next post over, we're going to slip stitch around it and go ahead and cut that off. It is essentially the exact same ear. You might need to push your double crochets up a little bit because the way we made it, it went down. But you can fix a lot of that just by tucking in the extra ends. And then once we get the, the um, antlers on there, it does kind of hide that because you can see where these were made differently. Now that you know how they're made, you can see the difference between the two ears, but it doesn't really stick out. Okay, we're going to make our antlers. So this, I just do a slip knot. And this one, I actually use um, my smaller hook, F uh, 3.7 point, I'm sorry, 3.75 millimeter. I don't know what I was trying to say there. And then I chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. In the second chain from the hook, slip stitch. And then in the next two as well. Then you will once again chain three, one, two, and three, and slip stitch in the second chain from the hook again, and the next chain. So you're gonna end up with this kind of prong looking thing. And so you're gonna skip over this area that you already worked on the chain and go to the unworked portion of the chain and slip stitch in those last two. And then you can go ahead and finish off with a chain one and leave a fairly long end for sewing on to your deer. Now, this is the antler, okay? So we're gonna make them all like this. The only thing we're gonna do um, is when you apply them, have the straight section of your antler towards the center of the deer head. I mean, you could flip it if you want to and have the antler going in. You can put them on any way you want, but if you want them to look like the original, then do it with a straight section and then the antler portion over the ear. So when you put on the next one, I mean, because they're all going to be shaped like this, just flip it over and apply like so. You really can't tell the difference. And if anybody's looking that closely at your squares, they need to find a new hobby. So I've done that with both of mine and you just tack them in place. And I'm just gonna apply the one so you get an idea of how to do this. Now, how I tuck in this end, and just because you're gonna be stitching through this, so it's not hypercritical for you to necessarily hide this really, really well. Um, I just kind of grab the back loops of my chain and I pull this through like so. And then I snip it off because like I said, I'm gonna be sewing through this to attach it to my deer. So all of that's really going to become secured anyway. Um, you will rarely find that stuff will poke through once you have attached it to an applique or made it as an applique. Okay, so at this point then I just start stitching. And I go in the, um, a lot of times in between the V stitches at the top, of the work, but really, as long as you are blending where you're going in and out, um, it doesn't stick out too much. It 
it's really just a matter of tacking it down. However, I like to be fairly thorough when I'm tacking stuff in place because I don't want it coming off later while it's in use. Just lost the needle. Okay, there we go. And back down to the bottom. Alrighty. So I'll talk in all these ends later, but this is the antler put in place. You're gonna make two of these so that you have two antlers, obviously. Um, I'm gonna go quick do another one just to show you how it's done again. Slip stitch. Chain six, two, three, four, five, six. This is super fast to make. Slip stitch into the second chain from the hook and the next two. So a total of three slip stitches. Chain three, because we're making the side horn now. Slip stitch into the second from the hook and the next one. So that's a total of two slip stitches. Skip over the, what you already worked on up here and slip stitch into the last two open chains. Do a quick chain one. And I just flung that across my desk. Pull through. All right, and then tuck in your ends. And I'm gonna place that one right there. All right, I'm not gonna do any kind of face on here because this is just in a little abstract deer. And I wanted to make these squares easy for you to make so that you could do lots of them. Um, if you want to embroider a face on here, you're obviously more than welcome to. And make it any way that you'd like. Can't wait to see what you do with the square.